Okay, so good morning, everyone. And today we are going to be talking, uh, we're going to be taking actually a journey through the exciting world of GPT-3 and AI. Um, we are going to be discussing what GPT-3 is, uh, how it works and the breakthrough against previous models, and also the impact it will have on various fields in the future. Um, we are also going to be exploring what applications uh, GPT-3 can, can be applied on and for developers and designers. So, okay, let's dig in. Um, so GPT-3 stands for Generative Pre-Training Transformer 3. It's a cutting edge technology that took the AI world by storm. I guess that you have all been seeing this uh, for the past months everywhere. Um, and it's a type of AI that uses deep learning algorithms to process natural language and generate human-like responses. Um, GPT-3 works by using a huge amount of data to train its algorithms. And this allows it to understand and process language in the way that, uh, that we humans do, right? Uh, or, or a similar way that we humans do. And it uses this uh, understanding to generate responses that are actually the same that we humans do. So they seem like humans, or, or the, the chat seems like it's a human replying. Um, and the more data it has, right, the better it gets. So, um, so why is GPT-3 revolutionizing, uh, revolutionizing the, the AI world? GPT-3 um, is breaking the mold of AI technologies that came before it. And it's significant, significantly larger and are, are more advanced than previous models. And it's surpassing its competitors in terms of language processing capabilities. And this makes it incredibly important for the future of, of AI. Okay, you know what? Yeah, um, I, I'm actually lying to you. This, is, this isn't the presentation, if you see here. Um, I actually generated this presentation using GPT-3. Um, if you see here, let me hide this because I'm... I actually asked GPT-3 because I was going to give a presentation today and I actually asked it for, um, for all the details that I want, that I needed for my presentation. So I asked for a title, of course, that I had to give some context to it and I wanted to uh, descriptions to generate the images. If you saw all the images that we are seeing in the, the presentations are <laughs> generated by Dali. And I didn't even bother by writing those descriptions for Dali. I asked GPT-3 to, to create them. And so first, what I did first is give it context. Then I asked for a title and, uh, and also a description. So it gave me three possibilities and I chose this. This is exactly what I put in the announcement, the, the name and the description. And here is the, the description for the image that I put on DALI 2. And this is the image that I finally uh, used. Uh, then I gave a little bit more context on what the slides should be about. And then I asked for the first slide. And this is the title of the slide, the text content that I asked for. And then I asked um, that the description um, is something that I would use to speak, right? So everything I said in each one of those slides, uh, minus the bad pronunciation and <laughs> some connectors that I need to use because I'm bad at English, um, was what uh, GPT-3 generated. So, this was the first slide. The second slide, I give a little, gave a little bit more context and I asked for the second slide, etc. cetera. Um, and of course, it generated some image descriptions to uh, go on to DALI and uh, ask the, the images. Some images doesn't make sense, right? Like this one or maybe, well, this one was nice. Um, but then uh, I didn't, uh, ask for a, a character limit on these images descriptions. So what happened is was that uh, these prompts are too large for Dali. So I had to cut them down, cut them down, and etc. But I, I didn't want it. I, I didn't want to regenerate everything. So yeah, I just used what it could fit in inside uh, the Dali prompt space. 
Um, then I realized after arriving to the sixth slide that I didn't wrote something to say when I had to present the meeting, the, the, the talk, right? So I asked it for a paragraph of 30 words uh, to present the, the, um, the presentation. And this is exactly what I said. Well, uh, so I, I removed this because it was going to be obvious. I, I, I don't think that I would ever set Sabacle up and get ready. Um, but yeah, and that's it. So this talk, this talk is going to be really about um, what you can do in your day-to-day -day, uh, with GPT-3. Let me move this because I cannot see the tabs behind it. I don't know how to drag this. Um, sorry, I cannot drag the... Okay, I'm going to do this because I cannot move it. Maybe... That's it. Um, so yeah, these are all the images that it generated for each one of the slides. It, it has a, a weird fixation with that robot. And then the trophy, it was, I don't know, it had weird, weird ideas, but I didn't want it to correct it. So I used what, what it gave me. Um, so for example, you, you can ask GPT-3 to reply emails or give statuses. For example, uh, let's say that I'm working on an application, a JavaScript application, and um, let's say that I build already a model, and now I need to put the fields inside, right? It's just a simple, a simple task that I have on one of my Shira issues. I, I need to create a model and then add some fields onto it, and at some buttons. And for example, I just built the model yesterday and I want to uh, write that, that message. So for example, I will say uh, morning, I guess. And then yesterday um, I finished building the model and today I'm going to um, create or uh, put the components that are in the form inside. The idea is just to give something, right? And I will ask GPT-3 for something like, given the following uh, text, and would you rephrase it? And give a more formal tone. Given the following text, uh, we can give a little bit more uh, that that is going to be used to give an status on my daily. And you can ask for that, for example. Of course, that uh, this is just that prompt, right? But you can do this for wh whatever you want. And this is this this is pretty well actually. Um, yesterday I successfully completed the construction of the model today, and you can iterate over this. For example, uh, give uh, can you uh, make it more extend, or can you make it? For example. Okay, that's really weird. Uh, I, I actually didn't try this before, but the idea is that you can put uh, the your status here or maybe the dependencies, the dependencies of your status. For example, um, yesterday, uh, You can ask for something like this, and it should be uh, pretty comprehensive. Of course, that you you have you need to find a real 
status and try to parse it. I didn't want it to use a real status and that's why I'm not doing it. But we can do some uh, going, uh, go a little bit further. And for example, try to answer an email. Um, for example, let's see what emails I have. And uh, we can check this out. And this is something that we have been talking about with Diago and Scarlett and the, the partners. And for example, let me check this out. If we go, uh, and again, guys, this is all improvised. I, we, we, didn't, uh, we didn't set up this. And so the, the email subject is this one. And this is the content. Um, maybe since I'm writing this in Spanish, uh, I don't know how subject is. Okay, let's do it like that. Um, right, uh, no. It's pretty hard to uh, give the talk in English and uh, write this in Spanish. Sorry, guys. Something like that should work. This is not that impressive, right? I mean, this what what this solves is the idea of having a blank page. So, what you can do actually is whenever you don't get the idea that you want to have <laughs> to write an email or maybe create a presentation like I did, uh, you can create something uh, something as a base. So something that then later you can modify or maybe get inspired by. Um, and that's pretty much the idea. Actually, it works to also to rephrase things. For example, uh, identification las alias clave. Okay, yeah. So it gave a lot more context that, that I asked for. Maybe I can ask him to not uh, ask GPT-3 to not uh, invent so much, maybe. For example, that's it. I mean, you can do this as much as you want. You can change tone and make it, for example, more aggressive. Um, can you? Uh, I don't know, actually. Yeah, exactly. And uh, GPT-3 has its limit. I, I guess that a few weeks ago, it could do something around this, but maybe we can uh, more aggressive no more. Maybe if we remove the aggressive tone. <laughs> so, okay, soft but firm. Okay, yeah. Apparently, you cannot do that anymore, but because it has its limit, right? Uh, I mean, they, they OpenAI built a lot of. Hmm, kind of walls 
surrounding aggressiveness and content that you cannot create. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, this is pretty much. Of course, that uh, you can tweak the prompts to make something a little bit more aggressive and etc. Of course, that you don't need that in the in pretty much. No, but but yeah. Um, let me send this out. Because why not? Oh, yeah, you have that problem, right? Where if you put it like that, then you uh, it would copy the, the background. So yeah, that's it. It's amazing that uh, that GPT-3 knows that I'm Juan because on the email, uh, Yago sent Juan, right? But, uh, but I never said what my name was. So it knows that I, it has to, to reply like that. And that's it. Um, maybe I should write here and here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is all nice. Um, you can do a lot more in, in regards of uh, generating text and etc. For example, um, here I have um, the other day um, one of the the teams. Um, Competed in a in a hackathon, right? In a hackathon, yeah. And they created a dashboard uh, to visualize the data. And this is a real application. Um, and they wanted to add uh, OpenAI uh, to to this page in in some way. So what they had is this uh, data set where they have some values and some countries and some, yeah, some metrics, right? For each one of those countries and they wanted to compare them between them. So we created a prompt to generate this kind, these types of, uh, of data. And, and yeah, that's all nice. I mean, it's not that new. I, I will show you something a little bit uh, more comprehensive around this, this idea, but Something that uh, somebody pointed out on LinkedIn, it was that the values, the, the mat uh, that uh, GPT-3 displayed in here, for example, if you see there, there is a value of 69,287. And of course that you can see some, num yeah, here, for example, you have some percentages there and et cetera. And actually GPT-3 is really bad at math when it comes uh, to generate text uh, with, with numbers uh, inside of it. So I proposed an idea that if we had more time, we, can, we could have um, created something around that. And it was that uh, some, this prompt uh, it can kind of goes like this. I mean, this is exactly what we are doing in the other, in, in, in this example, right? But we are not uh, saying more than, okay, given this data set, give me a response. And here, what uh, the idea is that you can generate a text with placeholders, right? And then generate functions to fill those placeholders with numbers. I mean, and it does. I mean, it generates JSON responses. Um, you can ask GPT-3 actually to give you a response in a JSON structure. And for example, this is, this is a conversation between a, an AI and a human. And the reply that the AI, the AI can only it can, can only use is this JSON structure, right? So you have a text that is going to be the, the main text that you want to use. And then some JavaScript functions that apparently this is a dictionary, right? Where you have some placeholders and a string. And this string will contain the code. Of course, that you, are, you need to give a lot of instructions on what um, the human will do what the AI should do with this data set and what those placeholders mean, etc. And then the idea is that you put a tag human here, you send the data set, and then it replies only using JSON. That is, if you actually parse this in, for example, in, in Chrome, and maybe there is an error with some tags. Yeah. Um, Maybe we can see it in better in, in VS Code. Oh, well, you cannot share VS Code. Okay, yeah. So that that I I it is not actually necessary because I have another example. But if you see here, it's generating um, JavaScript code to parse actually the data 
and generate the, the, the values that we want, right? So of course that this, this prompt has to be a more refined because you have numbers here that are still there. And I asked in the, the chat that every number should be a placeholder, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't took effect. So yeah, it has to be refined. But this is pretty much the idea. I mean, at this point, I, I think that you can generate pretty much everything um, if you give enough prompts to it, uh, it will process them in, in accordingly. I mean, it's pretty logical when it comes to generate these kinds of JSON responses. Um, so let me uh, let me close these tabs because we don't need them anymore. Let's close this. And, uh, and now I want to show you what we have been doing uh, at Lenio Labs with, with these ideas. Um, when GPT-3 3.5 actually came out because uh, I'm talking about GPT-3, but actually uh, this the, the the thing that we are going that we are seeing here in chat of AI is GPT-3 3.5. Um, it did pretty much a lot of advancements uh, with the previous model, right? And this is why every uh, that's why the, all the fuss is out. I mean, in, I believe it was on December that this came out, and then it took. Uh, like uh, GPT uh, said in the in the first slide, took the world by by surprise, right? Um, so we have started to explore on these things, and um, actually, Yago sent me a, a message saying that if he loaded some data, this could create uh, some summaries around the data, right? For example, if I copy this data and I create uh, something like this, and I put given the following data set. Give me a description about it. It will actually give you a summary of what the data is about. Because it understands that this is a table. Sometimes it takes a little bit because yeah, everybody is using it. Let's wait a bit. Okay, it's taking too much. <laughs> okay, that's it. This is crazy, right? I mean, uh, it's understanding what the table is with the names, the, the I mean, the, the, with the header row and also the all the values in for what for each one of the rows, and it's it knows that this is a tab, right? And it has to space those values in the same way. I mean, it understands tables. It even gives you what each thing is, right? Because it infers these names and these, uh, I mean, what is the meaning for each uh, column um, by using the name of the column and also the values that you have in the column, right? So first it gives you, it gives you a um, summary of what the idea is, then it gives you uh, uh, what each of the columns mean and then it can give you ranges and a little bit of math around around it. So, what we realize at the moment, uh, at that moment, is that this is solving a pretty complex problem that is accessibility around tables, right? Um, if you have an HTML table, the issue is that um, somebody who is using a, a screen reader it's going to have a, a hard time, right? Let me find a, a, a website that has a table, for example. Okay, so here you have uh, some columns and some rows, right? And some values. And somebody with a screen reader will, will go field by field by reading. Of course, that there are tables that, has, that have summaries and have captioning and they are designed for to be accessible, right? I mean, and you can make tables accessible, but it's pretty weird if I want to compare this value with this value or et cetera, or if I, if I even want to find a pattern in the data of this table, it's going to, to be difficult by doing it with a, with a screen reader because you are going to be reading cell by cell and you cannot do a, like um, on a screen, uh, uh, yeah, uh, summary, right? So what, so the idea is just a stroke. I mean, we, we just needed a way to parse this data and add some captioning around it. So we created this extension 
And this is one of the things that we have been building on, on the AI channel and the AI uh, team. Um, and this, everything that you see here, uh, this is just the, the landing, right, for extension. The actual extension is here in the Chrome web store. We have already 36 users. And uh, you only have to, uh, I, I go here, yeah. You need to configure your API key and then you can parse whatever, whatever page you are on. And what this will do is, for example, append this uh, header on each one of the tables and you can put analyze table now and it will give you um, a summary of what this table is about. It takes a little bit because, yeah, uh, open AI systems are kind of um, really on demand at the moment. So, so yeah. Um, but if you see here, it gives you a summary of what the this table is about. Of course, this table is just a placeholder, right? Is from W3. But and and the what the extension does is to add a caption, right? Where we add the the description inside of the table. This is a tag that uh, screen readers uh, usually read. And also we add a summary. And this is another tag that screen readers uh, use. And the summary gives you, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you, you can read this with a, with a screen reader and that's it. I mean, uh, it gives you a pretty comprehensive um, summary of what the data is about. And this actually solves uh, an issue. That, right, that some people have. Let me close this. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we created this landing to explain what the the extension does. Um, and actually, all the text that you are seeing here, pretty much all the text. Not, I mean, the, the name is something that we put, right? But everything else, like uh, for example, this text or here, the titles and um, everything that you see here inside of the. Um, of the of these accordions is generated by using GPT-2. So we didn't even bother to generate this copy. We just copied it from from GPT-3. Uh, I mean, we just in the in the Figma we only had the the learning ipsum and then we replaced it with content that uh, GPT-3 uh, generated. Um, okay, so let me show you something a little bit more advanced with the same idea. Um, we generated this uh, dashboard where you can upload some data, right? And after I, I don't, I'm not going to analyze it because it will take uh, quite a bit. It takes like 30 seconds up to one minute. Um, but we, what we are doing here uh, is to upload some some data set, right? And this is the same data set that I was trying on the on the chat, and we are asking a problem that is quite uh, a bit larger than the previous one. I mean, in the previous one, we asked just for a description and that's exactly what we are using here on the accessible tables. We are just ask asking for a description on the data set. But here we are asking for a JSON response. And we are asking a JSON response for uh, some filters, some KPIs and some charts. What are those, those things? I mean, we, we explain later what each of these things mean. Uh, for example, filters is a title and a column. I mean, it's the column that they, we could filter the data on, right? And we are asking GPT-3 for everything. I mean, here, it, there isn't anything hard-coded, you could say. I mean, not for the data set, right? Because it has to be dynamic. So we are asking for some columns that we can use and in this data set to filter the, the, the data, uh, some KPIs, KPIs are those uh, numbers summarizing the data in some way, right? So key performance uh, indicator is the actual term, uh, performance indicator, if you see here. Um, and we also ask, ask for a JavaScript function that could do a summary on the values uh, for this KPI. And we also ask for some charts where we have the chart type and here we enumerate what charts we can generate with our uh, UI. And then we ask for a JavaScript fun function that um, can aggregate the data or maybe format the data in order to use them in, on the charts. Um, then we give uh, some more instructions like the, all the functions 
that, that we are going to be using uh, have to need, need to have this uh, callback form. Uh, other functions should operate if the value is not null. And then we give a, a little bit of an example on how to parse uh, columns that have numbers, right? Because uh, if, if you don't, are not specific in this case, uh, it can do pretty weird things. Um, after we do that, I mean, we concatenate the, some, some rows of the dataset. I mean, you, you don't need to send all the rows. You can just send a, a sample since all the values are going to be generated using the JavaScript fun functions, you're okay, right? So this is what uh, the, um, the R responds with. Uh, let me, oh yeah, because the I haven't parsed this one. Okay, uh, let's go to this one. This is the replay of the, or one of the replies that can, uh, that the data dashboard can give you. Uh, it gives you an object with some uh, filters I mean, you have the, the filter name and the column that is going to take the values from to create the filter. Then in the KPIs give you a title and also a JavaScript function. And if you see this function, it's just, I, I mean, it works, right? It's, it's just JavaScript. You can just evolve this function and make it work. If you um, do an eval of, of this function and then you put the data, uh, it will, go over each one of the values and do the, the calculations. I mean, sometimes it, it fails, but pretty much 90% uh, of the time it, it works. And I mean, with the prompt that we have uh, at the moment. Um, okay, so it gives you a function for you one, each one of the KPIs. And then here we have the charts where it says uh, chart type and what type, uh, what chart we need to use to display this data and then it generates the JavaScript function to aggregate this data. And if you see here, it will output the X and Y values for each one of the, the, of the charts. And this is the pretty crazy thing, right? I mean, this is total price by roster. And if you see here, this is doing um, a grouping because it's uh, finding, it's trying to find if there is a, um, if the roster, right? I mean, this is uh, doing the total price by roster. Roster is the name, right? Or uh, no, sorry. Uh, roster is the second column and is aggregating over those values for the same roster and then opening the, the same value. I mean, this isn't the way that I will group this, but it actually works and it generated it quite easily, right? Um, and here is um, grouping by origin, for example, because this is total by, by origin. And this is the uh, calculated distribution over, this is pretty weird. I mean, it's only filtering the ratings from 90 to 95. That's crazy. I mean, because I know that it, there is a rating of 97 somewhere. Um, but yeah, it just generates what, whatever it wants. And then this is the, the reply. Since we have the, all those codes, all, all that code, we can just parse the data. And we have here like, um, like a harness where you can displace th those values, right? I mean, since you have the title and the, and the value to be calculated, I, I mean, the function to use to calculate this value, that's it. You can just use that function, get the value, and put it over here. Um, here on for this uh, bar chart, it's the same. I mean, you have the data, you have the title, and you just put it. Since it's an array of objects with x and y, y values, it works. And the same for each one of the, the charts. Of course, that this is not uh, an awesome product, right? I mean, this is just an example of what you can do. Um, and this is just a prompt that uh, costs like two cents, uh, two cents of a dollar, right? So imagine if you split this prompt in several more prompts. Like for example, you could uh, do one prompt this big for one chart, right? Or one prompt like this one uh, for a KPI. So you can add more parameters on what you want to see, uh, what the value should, uh, what the functionality of JavaScript should do with the data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, so here, and let me show you. This is a dashboard that I generated previously to previous to this meeting. And this is another one with the same data set. It always generates different things. Um, so yeah. Um, currently, oh, oh sorry, I, something that I forgot is that you can filter these things, right? And you can pretty much, I mean, this isn't, uh, this isn't something that really uh, crazy. I mean, we are just filtering something by name, but this, but everything is dynamic uh, by using this, uh, this response that the, that the AI gives you. Um, so yeah. This is what we have been working on. And currently at the AI channel, if you want to join, we are working on two new projects. One is to, in order to summarize videos, the idea is about um, grabbing a YouTube video, for example, or a meeting video from Zoom or, or from Teams. And let's say that that video is two hours long. You don't want to see those two hours. You just want to be the you should want to see the, the key topics around it and they are where the, the actual content is or around those two hours of, of video, right? So we, what we are building is something to summarize those videos. So we are doing some transcribing with Whisper and then we um, pass those um, those lines that are with certain timestamp. We give you, uh, we pass it through some other AI where we filter those lines and then we generate a video that is shorter. Uh, I mean, by using the timestamps, right? We are not uh, generating a summarization of new content, etc. We are just cutting the parts that are uh, that actually have the actual content. And um, yeah, we are also generating another page that is um, in order to redact um, PDFs. So the idea is that you put a PDF in, and this AI will identify what the text are on the, on the page and then um, give an entity to each one of the text. For example, if you see a name or if you see an age or if you see an ethnicity or a religion, et cetera, it will try to identify those, those values and put a black box on top of them. And then you can filter if you want to remove or add those um, those things those products are going to be um, we are going to have some uh, mvps for the following uh, in the following weeks and of course that if you want to come and and, and join us in and in helping us to the di yeah discover what we can do and try to build these products uh, you can you can come and you are going to be uh, actually world aside uh, world aside. um so yeah, thank you everyone. And I will put here my last screen saying thank you. And uh, questions? So um, I have a, a question. Yeah. So I heard that chat GPT cost a lot of money month, monthly. Um, yeah. Is that because of the survey usage or, or I, I don't know, do, do they have to post everything on their, on their server? Yeah, I mean, the, the models are pretty huge, right? So the, the models, yeah, are quite big. I mean, there are some pretty terabytes of data that you need to, to run this model. So that's why you, I guess that you cannot run it in your machine, not even if you wanted. Um, but the idea is that a chat GP, uh, let, let me do a disclaimer. Chat GP3 and this website is something different than what we are using over here. Here we are using an API that is the, the completion API. Um, and this works by, um, running a query that you can put up to 4,000 um, 4, tokens. Those tokens are syllables, you can say, or three letters. I mean, it's something weird the way that, that they define that value. But let's say that is uh, around 12,000 or 
or 10,000 characters, right? And that costs around two uh, cents of a dollar. And uh, this is the way that, that we build this. And yeah. But this thing is more like a search engine or, a, or another application. It runs uh, with the same uh, model behind it, but is a little bit different. And we, what you are paying, I believe, is a subscription-based uh, model, right? Where you have to pay uh, something around $40. Um, but the idea, of course, is that uh, the company went private and they want to make money around this and they also yeah. sold it to, to Microsoft. So yeah, they are uh, actually keeping this for themselves. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that replaced your, your question. But... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> That's good. Okay, let me read the chat. Um, do you guys have any more questions? Uh, what's your opinion on this killing a lot of positions or jobs? Um, before I was more afraid of it. Now I think that is something like, something that it, it will help us for at least two years. And maybe in two years, this can explode and, and, and of course. Uh, I, I don't think that it will, it's going to replace us, not here in Argentina, at least for, for quite a while. But, but yeah, it's quite, a, it's, it's quite unpredictable, right? Uh, I, I think that is quite hard to make a prediction at the moment. I have another one if you want. Uh, have you read something or have you saw something on the generative games? I mean, games created by AIs with graphics created by an AI, the story created by an AI. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. I just tried to create a, a, a game here on ChatGPT. Uh, you, you actually can give a ChatGPT context on how you want to interact with it, right? Like, I mean, uh, like we did here or like we are doing here. Um, but you can give context, like, for example, and this is a game between, etc. I mean, I mean, and, and you and you want to put that, for example, uh, this is a world, and the, the way that I interact with this world is going to be through options, and you need to give me, for example, quests, and I have a health bar, etc., cetera, et cetera, and then you can interact with the AI through those options that it will reply, right? So, yeah, that's an idea. I mean, uh, it's it's uh, around those terms, it's the same thing, but yeah, I, I never played with uh, with those things um okay. i have some some information about that as well um i get so amazed <laughs> by chat especially um on the last uh two weeks or so and i started investigating um what else can you do with uh with ai um i'm a visual artist as well i'm an illustrator um i have a um a business on 3D printing, and, and I'm thinking about uh, many things that can be done in the future, for example, generating um, 3D models with AI that can be actually printed, and you just write a prompt, uh, like in ChatGPT, and it generates the, um, the 3D models, and that is actually in the works right now, um, but regarding the video games or interactive um, uh, content uh, generated by, by AI, um, I can send some videos. I was actually watching today before this um, before this talk um, about a model that is called um, SAR or SAR. Um, it stands for State Action and Response, um, and it's actually a model that um, lets you um, create actions like in video games, or for example, present a state to um, uh, an artificial intelligence. Um, and it will create an action and uh, a response uh, to that um, to that situation or to that context. And the example for this is a video game of Spider-Man where an AI learns to swing like Spider-Man um, in 
um, in a several uh, waves of in, um, iteration, let's say, um, I can send that um, to the to the Slack. And other thing that I was reading about was um, an episode of Seinfeld that was uh, actually made with AI. Um, the project um, was called um, Nothing Forever, I think. Um, and the project was an episode of Seinfeld that will never uh, that will never end. It was a twenty four hour uh, stream where all the dialogues, all the three D models, and all the camera changes were made um, with artificial intelligence. Um, they are low poly models, for example, um, but they are generated um, in real time. Um, the problem with that was uh, the input, the the artificial intelligence um, was fed with. Uh, to create dialogues, and they had to shoot down the um, the project at least for the moment, because um, as you may know, um, some actors of uh, the the the, the Seinfeld seri series uh, were actually <laughs> cancelled by the media um, because of of some awful things they said um, in public or or on private shows and things like that. And accidentally, um, the 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 model of the AI was fed uh, with those with that content and it was shut down first by Twitch and then um, the um, the creators of the project uh, say that they will try to uh, feed um, the, the, the artificial intelligence with, with a better model um, that will not contain that that kind of things and they will uh, reshoot the, um, the, the project again. Um, but I, I can share all of that because I think it's really, really interesting where this is going, <laughs> where this is going to. Um, I've been making some tests uh, with artificial intelligence as well in the in the previous weeks, uh, especially with creative stuff like uh, I I was creating um, a script for a comic book, for example, uh, with with a friend, and I asked the the AI to help me with the script, and the ideas of the AI uh, were way way more superior that that than, than mine because i'm not a, a writer um so th there's a lot of, of of topics to talk about this but um i'm very interested in this and i can share some some information i was gathering uh the previous weeks amazing Carlos. yeah feel free to actually to, to share. Uh, I, I wanted to say something that is basically uh, as a company, uh, AI, it's obvious that it's something we should be on top of. Um, we don't know what's going, what's going to happen, if it's going to be super useful, zero useful, super. But the idea is to be very close to what is happening. That's why also Juan is working so actively on all of this. So anything that you're checking, the, the more we know as a, as, as a group, the better so anything that you can share anything that you can you can hey i was doing this i was checking this the more we can share the better because again we don't know it's a, if it's a threat if it's an opportunity if it's something that's going to affect a lot it's not going to affect anything at all but uh, we need we need to be on top of it we need to we need to be sure that we know what we are what's happening that's also why we're going to have a uh, Juan, I can mention this. I can, we're going to have a talk about this uh, with experts yeah, on the matter uh, very soon. Uh, and uh, so the idea is all of you to be uh, very, very on top of what's going on with uh, not only in, from, from the company side, but also from the external side. That was it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, actually, next week is uh, our next talk about uh, AI, and we are going to have a, an external expert uh, talking about the AI and the future and the current state of AI and how this all these things work. Yeah, basically, is uh, Mark Woodward. You, I think, some of you already know him or were in a previous talk about him. We had an introduction to AI, I think, one year ago, one year and a half. I don't remember exactly. Uh, now the idea is to have a conversation about generative uh, generative models. Yeah. Hope you okay, find I it. I think there was a question. Uh, Ivan wanted to ask a question. Uh, yes. Um, do you know how can I improve the quality of the text generated? 
by the GPT chat. I mean, I add some context, but if there are some keys uh, to get a, a better response. It's trying, for me at least, it's trying an error. I mean, there are some ways um, to, to ask the AI to give you ideas on how to improve the, the text and then ask to apply those ideas. I will share a video with you and with all of you uh, where the where the user asked the, the, the AI to give, give him a, a list of things that he can do for, uh, uh, to that text, right, to improve it. And then he applies each one of those rules in order. Um, ah, so you get all the possible answers. Yeah, okay. uh, pretty much, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's just iterating. And the idea is that it can, I, I, I saw a response that, uh, or there in the chat that are not that good. The responses are not that good, but that's because the prompt maybe is not that good. I mean, you can give enough context to make the the response pretty pretty good. Actually, I think one of the main things that's going to happen we will have to learn how to speak with artificial intelligence. Uh, at the very beginning of search engines, one of the skills is you didn't know how to interact with the search engine. And it's a skill that it's natural in all of us. But even though I'm, you don't search exactly the same way you were doing like three years ago or two years ago, you keep learning how to search uh, information in Google. Uh, uh, so uh, one of the things that we were thinking and we were planning, we wanted to start creating a mechanism right now, not for improve the search or the prompts in AI, but at least to start to have a good way to share the prompts with others. And Juan is working on it uh, right now. So if you're interested on that, um, you're very welcome to join the initiative and, and put your, uh, add your, your extras there, add, add whatever you think. Uh, the idea is to have the goal right now. It tries to be very narrow, very focused. How can we make sharing of prompts uh, as efficient as good as possible? Like uh, once in a day, how did you share websites? How did you share pieces of code? All those, all those small items. These are beautiful sentences that I love. This when in the gold rush, the one whom the ones who were who made themselves rich were the ones who were building um, palace. Sorry, I will say that Shovels. in Spanish because I don't. Shovels, yes. Shovels. Uh, one of the important things of uh, AI is not the AI itself. It's also about the context around AI, how to share prompts, how to uh, create prompts, how to uh, share with other people, uh, not only in how you can save your prompts, all those kind of things. I think they are going to be really interesting in the if AI is a big thing in the long term. Yeah. A comment on this, Yago, is um, because uh, the when ChatGPT was released, uh, the technology behind it is the GPT three, right? But the the UI and the chat experience was like a game changer for a lot of people and and it explodes. Uh, and so that's super important. The, the UI and how do you relate to the to the AI is almost important as the AI itself. So, yep. Yep. yeah. And that's where we have to become as good as possible at the, the not only, not only in the in the prompts, but in the AI, understanding what AI is and what's useful for means a lot on the on the interfaces that you can use to interact with it uh, and being very knowledgeable about the AI will give you the knowledge about the interfaces to use that AI. Sorry, I jumped into the conversation and I hijacked it. Sorry, Juan. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, we are just chatting at, at the moment. But but thank you for the for the for the context, Yago. I, I mean, everybody should be 
actually taking a look on this. I mean, uh, we, we cannot fall short, right? I mean, this is the, uh, apparently this is the next step. Uh, yes. We will, uh, before, before this, we were chatting about Web3, right? I mean, that was the, the main topic last year. And now it, this took uh, the, the, the world by. I mean, everybody is talking about uh, GPT and AI, etc. And yeah, apparently it, this is going to take relevance on, on top of uh, Web3. Mario has a question, I think. Yeah, Mario. Yeah, very, yeah, very interesting topic. Um, uh, as you know, I am in the soft skill channel in uh, Slack. Uh, so soft skills and AI uh, have um, a lot of difference. So humans versus computers. Uh, I shared there some screenshot of some uh, questions that I did to ChatGPT. So feel free to 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 follow the conversation there and your and your opinions. But there was a question that I ask it now. So I think it's it's good to know. So why can be. Uh, so we should be using this because it's like the, the, the last trend. We are all people that work on this area. I ask it the, why an AI tool uh, to look information can be more useful than thinking or researching if uh, AI uh, is not considering all of data. So the, the thing answered me that four, four topics that be, why is good to, to use it. Uh, one is a speed, so it's faster, right? Yep. So that's true. the other one is that the thing said was consistency, because yep. can provide consistent answers. The other one was accessibility, because it's access you can like talk, write in different languages. And the other one was convenience, because it's you can find things like quick. But yep. uh, so that's a very, very good use. We can like improve a lot of things in our like daily basis, in our works, with our work. In, um, but I think that this is just something that is going to help us. But in, I, I don't think that it's going to replace us in any way. Uh, there are going to be a lot of works that going to be like uh, replace it. But those are the the works, the tasks, the things, the the not the not 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 humans, you know. So yep. I think that you, if you if you are afraid of what is going to happen, join more frequently to the soft kill channel, <laughs> and I will be there giving you more information. But I think it's a good, very good topic. Thanks, JC, for sharing this. Thank you, Mario. Um, hey. telling, uh, we will share some some channels that I have been seeing on YouTube yeah. uh, later on. on. What's the central the... channel we have for AI? What's the the central point in Slack? AI. It's AI. Exactly like that. Okay. Yeah. So anybody can join yeah, I, AI. I shared the articles I talked about uh, in there. Mm -hmm. um, I just got in, the, in that channel. I saw you were discussing about some projects, so I I was not sure if that was the right place. But um, I shared uh, four articles about what I have been talking um, earlier. At the very beginning, there is going to be a lot of chaos. There is going to be a lot of lot of chaos regarding AI, new tools, new features, new things. The idea is to yeah. try to uh, understand what's going on on the background, get the fundamentals, and build on top of those fundamentals, because it's going to be trend, a uh, fashion, it's going to be a uh, form, it's going to be so many things. So, uh, the more we can help each other to remove what is accessory and get to the fundamentals, that would be amazing. And I'm asking about, I'm saying that because I need help, and any help is super welcome from all of you. Yeah. Okay, is there any more questions, guys? Oh. No. Okay. And apparently, Ivan created his question with GPT. So, so yeah. Yeah, I have like a, nine more questions Amazing. to do. <laughs> created by GPT chat. Uh, but no, 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 no more questions.
Okay. Okay. Um, so thank you everybody for for the training. Uh, you can join the the AI channel. We are um, doing our dailies because we are working on two projects at the moment. We are going to be adding new projects for in the following weeks. Um, you can join and come to code or maybe listen. I mean, you don't need to, to come and work if you want. You, you can just come and listen and throw ideas. We are also uh, doing brainstorms, exactly. Um, usually on Wednesday, uh, on Wednesdays, yesterday we didn't do it, but this this Friday we are going to be following with the, with the um, brainstorm that we started uh, last week. Um, but yeah, join, feel free to, to join, to drop by and ask the whatever question you want. I mean, the idea is to create an ecosystem around this and yeah, and to learn together about what uh, we can build on top of these new technologies. Thank you. Uh, see you, see you next uh, Friday, I think, or uh, Thursday. I don't remember if we are going to move the, the following, um, uh, the following talk, but, but yeah, we will send the, 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 the announcement. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye.